Live and direct. Right, right, right. It's Sway in the morning. Right here on Shade 45. Vicky yeah. Lawrence is yes. here. Yay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I always thought you were funny. And um, I was reading something. <laughs> I always thought you and Carol Burnett looked alike, but I thought it was a coincidence. Well, obviously it was a coincidence, <laughs> uh, you know. But I didn't know that um, early on, like in life, you you did an actual a uh, Carol Burnett lookalike contest. Or something? No, was, I know was, it was it was, not, a... was not a lookalike contest. Okay. It was it was a contest. Okay, but I wrote her a fan letter and told her that I looked like her. Oh, you wrote her the fan oh, and said uh-huh. you look like her. Uh huh. It, uh, and it was true. How did that happen? Are you guys got any of the same lineage? Just some cousins mix up or something? You know, uh, well, <laughs> and who knows where our dads were when? We, I'm not sure we can trace all of that. <laughs> right, right. Um, yeah, uh, but go ahead. Well, no, it was a, it was a Miss Fireball contest. It was our fireman's ball uh-huh. in uh, Inglewood, where I grew up. And uh, the they had they decided to have a contest because they wanted some girls to sing and dance. Uh-huh. So our local newspaper gal did an article about the girls that were entered in in the paper. She wrote that I looked like a young Carol Burnett. Wow. And uh, and I was trying to be Mary Tyler Moore. I really was trying so hard, Sway. But I cut my <laughs> hair really short right before I went into high school. And everybody said, no, you look like Carol Burnett. So I wrote her the fan letter. Uh-huh. My mom said, sit down and write this fan letter. Because I used to love to write fan letters. Wow. What wow. do you do now? You, you don't you, write you, you fan tweet letters, them. do you? You yeah. just tweet them. You, you just tweet. Mm-hmm. Or, or Instagram. You got to Instagram them. Yeah, yeah. See, well, yeah. back in the day, it was snail mail. Yep. <laughs> and they said, how did you know where to send it? I did. Didn't I send it to Carol Burnett in Hollywood? And and she read it. And it got to her desk yeah. two days prior to this contest. She just was had just moved to California, was just in the midst of starting to put together this variety show. Mm-hmm. Uh, she read the letter. She said there was just something about that letter. And she said, I just had this funny hunch. Mm-hmm. And I said to my husband, I want to go see this kid. And uh, the, the contest was at Hollywood Park, the racetrack. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he said, what the hell is she, a jockey? He said, I just, she said, I'm pregnant, indulge me, I have a hunch. So she literally took my dad's name out of the newspaper article, called me on the phone, made arrangements to come and see the contest. And wow, and the rest is history. Yeah, and that was November of my senior year. Mm-hmm. I didn't see her for several months. Uh, I di- I graduated from high school. I did a little audition. I mm-hmm. started on the Burnett Show the same fall that I entered UCLA. Wow. That's yeah. a, that's, see, man, and and that's, that's, a success, that's a true Hollywood story right mm-hmm. there. And, and the thing about Carol Burnett that I even noticed as a kid, which um, now as a, as an adult you can appreciate more, is that she was uh, autonomous. Like she ran her own ship, correct? Like she was the head of her production company? or was She, she uh, well, she had a lot of good people in place. Her husband okay. was the executive producer. Okay. And people will often say, what exactly does an executive producer do? Mm-hmm. Well, a good one hires all the best people, puts them in the right positions, and then just stands back and lets them do their job. Yeah, and doesn't meddle. Mm-hmm. And they didn't. They didn't meddle. They put all these great people in in position and just let that show fly like a top. Um, fly like a top. I like that. Fly I don't like think you fly like, like a top. top. Yeah, I was like, but you know what I mean. I thought about it for a moment. Like, <laughs> it sounded good, right? Uh, who uh, is that old lady uh, talking uh, about? Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not at all. You you look great, by the way. Uh, yeah. I, I, um, the the thing I used to love about um, the Carol Burnett show and even um, um, <laughs> Mama's family is I felt like the material was so great that you guys had a hard time keeping a straight face. We had a lot of fun. Yeah. We did all our improv and rehearsal, though. Did you? What do you mean? I like mean, the, you know, if there was something you wanted to improv or if there's something, you, an idea you had or something you wanted to try, we did it mostly in rehearsal. So by the time we got to the audience, it ran like a live show. Uh huh. It really did. There was not a lot of messing around. And it was, the show was beautifully written. Yeah. It really was. I was talking, as we were talking, we went to a restaurant the other night and there was this like this young bartender. And she says to my husband, so what are you guys doing here in town? And he says, well, we're here because Mama's family is being released on DVD. And she, and you just saw this little, her eye, her eyes lit up. And she went, oh my God, your mama. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed I am. Give me some more Pinot Noir. Anyway, so she, she said, oh my God. She said, back in the day, she said the comedy was so great. She said, now it's a fart joke. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Everything is like right on the surface. Yeah. There's nothing to think about. There's mm-hmm. no, she said, oh my God, it was just back when comedy was great. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I'm glad I got a chance to experience it now, too. The, and then you can still experience it. Like you said, you're releasing Mama's Family on DVD, right? Yeah. So Don't. you go out and get it and give it to the kids and let them have a ball watching it. It's Sway in the morning. Only on Shade 45.